please understand when Paul says that you were stoned, it was real stone. Three times he was shipwrecked. I mean, one time is enough for you to tell yourself, you're never ever going on a ship again. One time is enough. I can assure you that. After that kind of an experience. But three times he spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. He faced dangers in the city, deserts, out in the stormy seas. He faced he faced dangers from men who claimed to be Christians, his own, very own, and he lived with weariness, pain, and sleepless nights. He was often hungry and thirsty. He shivered with cold without enough clothing to keep him warm. Are you hearing me? This is the Apostle Paul who wrote approximately one third of the New Testament. Did God come up to him and warm him up somehow? No. He endured all of this. And then on top of all of that, he carried the daily burdens of all the churches. And if you know church folks, if you know church people, then you know that must be a big burden. Because you don't know them. Paul said, You think I'm weak? I'm not weak. He said, All these things, not some of these things, but all these things that I'm telling you, God knows that I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. Imagine how his congregation felt, the hearers felt, after he told them everything that he'd gone through. They were left thinking, we don't have it so bad after all, and we complain so much. Yeah, he heard, we heard that despite what you're going through, Someone would love to be in your shoes. Despite what you going through, someone would prefer your shoes than theirs. Don't forget mine. <laughs> so the children they were looking at my shoes. You don't want to walk in my shoes. You really don't want to. The story goes on that once Paul was in Damascus, the governor kept guard at the city gates to catch him. He said, well, we got him. We'll keep guard at the gates. But what happened? Paul was, by good faith, a basket case. The elders of the church put him in a basket and sent him down the wall and he escaped the governor. Escaped getting caught. In all of his sufferings, God gave Paul strength. In other words, each time that it appeared as if Paul would face defeat, he became a basket case. God swept him away to safety and to victory. And we need this morning to realize and understand that the same God who delivered Paul back then is right here to deliver you and me from whatever the situation. The governors can be at the gates. The summons can be at the door. The doctor's report can say a hopeless situation about your case. But God can deliver you from every bit of that. Amen. The Word of God tells us what to do when troubles arise. 
We're supposed to call on the name of the Lord. Look at Psalms 27. Here David has this revelation of God's abiding care. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise up against me, in this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that is what I will seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his holy temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. Wow, that's wonderful. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. That is what differentiates an eagle from a sparrow. An eagle will not make its nest anywhere here. It goes far above other birds. Sparrow, you can catch it anywhere down here. Not an eagle. We are eagle Christians. Not sparrow Christians. What else, he says, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of pain and suffering. Some of you are awake. Praise God. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy. Why? Because I don't have to fear anybody. Amen. I don't have to fear anything. Amen. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle and I will sing, yes, even if I can't sing. I will sing praises to the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Not on the lawyers, not on the social affairs department, not on your boss to give you an increase. Wait on the law. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on your boss. No. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Amen. So, dear brothers and sisters, don't wait until trouble is over to get yourself together. Because you need to be together in order to deal with your trouble. Amen. Don't say everything is going to, I've got to get together when everything works out. You better get together now. Amen. Or else it will never work out. In other words, before life becomes or makes you a basket case, you need to steal away to a quiet place and just have a little talk with Jesus. A little talk with Jesus makes things right. All right. Just a little talk with Jesus. Let me leave you with this. While one definition of a basket case 
points to a person who may be on the verge of losing control, there's a, another definition of a basket case that points to a person who is about to be touched by the strong hand of God. Now, stay with me now, don't miss me. You see, in the early days of the Greek theater, the characters would wear masks on stage to represent either tragedy or comedy. Whenever something bad was going to happen to a character on the stage, the playwright will always have another character above the stage to wear the mask of God. When the character could not find a way out of his problem, the stage hands knew that this was a case for God in the basket. And God would be lowered down in the basket. <clears throat> Once on stage, the God in the basket would save the characters from impending tragedy. But every now and then, life's troubles will get to where you can't handle them by yourself. That's when people might call you a basket case. That's when they will say that your case is hopeless. That is when they will say nothing anybody can do for you. But you will remember in Egypt, Pharaoh had given a command that all the little boys would be killed and there was this one Hebrew mother and she said, I don't want my boy to be killed. I love my boy. She was powerless to stand against the Egyptian soldiers. Can you hear her saying, Lord, I have a son and I have named him Moses. And he's about to be slain. I'm about to lose my mind because I don't really know what to do. I don't want him to be slain. God heard her and he said, that sounds like a basket case. He inspired her to make a basket and put baby Moses into this basket. The Nile River, it is said, had strong currents. But the peace of God came over this mother. Don't worry about the crocodiles. Don't worry about the strong currents. Don't worry about the possibility of turbulence. He said, I got the baby in my hand. There might be a mother here. There might be a father here this morning worried about their children. Listen to me. When you've done all that you know that you must do, put your children in God's hands. And you'll take care of the rest. What about the 5,000 people that sat listening to Jesus preach, and he preached, and he preached, and they were so hungry, but nobody wanted to miss a word. There was no shops. There was no spaza shops. There was no fellas with their bicycles or the coming around selling food. But there was a little boy who showed up with a little basket containing two little fish and five loaves of bread. Well, you all know the story all too well. Jesus took the little basket and blessed it. The Bible tells us not only did 5,000 people eat, but they had plenty left over. Somebody here today, you don't know how you're going to feed your family. Your situation seems so dark and dreary. It's a real basket case. Hopeless case. 
But that's when the Lord steps in and He blesses your baskets. And you will never miss a meal. Causing you to say, my soul looks back and wonder how I got over it. Paul said he was attacked from every side. He was beaten by the Jews five different times. He was beaten with rods three different times. He was stoned. He, ran, he was run out of town. He placed guards on a wall to trap him. But that's when heaven decided that Paul's situation was a basket case. And so, while his enemies were guarding and waiting for him, his friends lowered him down in a basket. The Bible tells us that Paul was able to escape. Well, somebody here this morning is being attacked by their enemies on every side. You've taken all that you can take and you just can't take any more. You are helpless. You are hopeless. You are on the verge of just throwing up your hands and saying, I give up. I don't know what more to do. What in fact you are saying, Lord, I'm a bastard case. That's when you need to remember the words of Psalms 121, where David says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. When your situation seems like a basket case, all you have to do is to look up. You've got to get this. We serve a God who specializes in basket cases. I wonder how many of you here have basket cases. I believe many here will testify that we have basket cases. We don't know what to do. Look up. He specializes in mending the broken hearted. He specializes in building up what has been torn down by the enemy. He specializing, he specializes in restoring what has been thrown away. He specializes in renewing what has been worn out. He specializing, he specializes in drying the tears of stained faces. He specializes in saving souls that are destined for a lost eternity. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, you need to know that God loves you. He cares about you and He is the specialist of every basket case. He cares so much for you that he gave his only begotten son. He sent him to pay the ransom for our salvation. And then Jesus cared enough about us to come into this sinful world and die like a criminal on an old rugged cross. He cared enough about us to die for the sins of the world. And he stayed in the grave for three days and three nights. But the early Sunday morning, he rose from the grave, ready to deal with your baskets. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's in your basket? Well, whatever it is that's in your basket, you need to realize and understand today that God, the God whom we serve, is able to speak to your situation. Whatever it is today that's in your basket, it might be a son, a daughter, a situation, a hopeless situation, whatever is in your basket, 
this morning by faith. I want you to lift it up and turn it over to Jesus. Amen. When the little boy gave his basket to Jesus, that's exactly what Jesus did. He lifted it up to the Father. And he asked the Father to bless it. Can we do that right now? You might have a basket case. You might be in a basket situation. Your very self this morning. I want you to lift it up as we stand together.